Hola, bienvenidos al Chalk and Talk special. This is an extra ch Chalk and Talk this week, and you might be wondering why. It's not to talk about, it's not to teach Spanish, okay? This is something that I've been meaning to do for a, for a good while, and I had a conversation with Scott Walker, and um, he was talking about an issue that he has, and I thought, okay, let's, let's do this. Basically, this is a therapy session. It's a therapy session. So I get a chance to do some therapy with you. What's it th therapy about what? Okay, so this only will be of value for you if when you come to speak Spanish, you suffer from uh, nerves, worry, uh, stuttering, um, not finding your words, okay? General discomfort, okay? So if you don't have that, then you don't need to do this, okay? This is just for people who, who have a lot of discomfort when they are trying to speak Spanish, speaking in public, for example. Um, and it's also, it's going to be helpful for you if you get frightened about grammar, okay? When you, when you come to, to study and this, there's grammar, some people like get into panic over grammar. Okay, I'm going to explain why. So basically, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on that. And we're going to use a few techniques, okay, um, that I use. Obviously, it, this is sort of a virtual therapy session, but it's fine. It's amazing what you can do as long as you do certain things. Now, for this to, for you to get the best out of this, all you need to do is to do everything that I ask you to do. That's it. Okay, I'm not going to do, ask you to do anything that would cause you any problems. Okay, so I'm only doing this for your benefit. I'm doing this for the higher good, so everything will always be good, if you understand. Um, but if I ask you to do something, just do it. Don't kind of second guess it. And the reason I say that is because um, these processes are fairly, these, these are very, I've used these processes a lot. The work. If you follow the steps, if you jump about and you say, oh, well, I don't really fancy doing that. Oh, I, I might just, I'll, I'll miss that bit out. Then it won't work. Okay, that's, that's all. So just do everything that I ask you to do. Okay, and follow the steps. Now to do this, uh, uh, you really want to be in a place where you don't have too many distractions or no distractions. So don't try and don't watch this if you're in the car. If you're driving or you're using heavy machinery, don't. Do it. Wait until you're in a safe environment and you're on your own, okay? Because we're going to be dealing with emotions and things like that. So let me let me tell you what our problem is, okay? And I include myself in that. We were brought up in um, a learning uh, system that did not help us in terms of, of being an adult. What I mean by that is, the education system now, certainly that we've had, and it still exists now, is this. Good or bad, pass or fail, intelligent or stupid, okay? And this is, uh, this is the way that our education system is, is built, right? You're either intelligent or you're not. You either pass the exam or you fail it, okay? You're either a good student or you're a bad student. So it's very black and white, the education that we have. Not only that, but we get labeled, okay? We get labeled as something. Well, you are blah, blah, blah. You're a good student. You're, you have problems, yeah, with, you have problems with language, I think. French is not your thing. Probably languages aren't your thing, all right? So we're bombarded, and this is when we're, when we're children. We're bombarded by messages from very important people, teachers, parents, uh, aunts, uncles, relatives, friends, peers, but more big people. What's the problem with that? The problem is that when, when we are from the age of zero up to around about eight, okay, seven, eight, 
whatever somebody tells us, we believe. And whatever program somebody gives us, and when I say a program, I'm talking like a computer program, think this way. At that age, we take it on board. If the person that's giving us this information is in a place of authority, teachers, place of authority. So what we do is we accept on board, we take on board what big people, important people tell us when we're that age. We are just open. We don't have any critical thinking. Okay. So what happens is we spend the rest of our lives getting over the first eight years of misprogramming that we get from people. Okay. We get lots of good programming as well. The problem is sometimes the bad programming is the bit that stands out. It's the bit that causes us discomfort. Okay. And so we notice it more. We notice it much more than we notice the good programming. Lots of people tell us great things, but lots of people, adults can be rubbish sometimes. Okay. We can be rubbish. And some of the things that we say to children are so damaging to them that, that they, they, they don't get over it for the rest of their life. Okay. We can create self-esteem in, in a child and we can create low self-esteem, high and low, purely by telling them what they are. Okay. It's worthwhile bearing in mind. So when you tell a child you were stupid, the child has no way of not knowing that that's false or knowing that that's false, I should say. So the child has no way of critically thinking, wait a minute, because I do this and I've done that and done that. And as we do as adults, we've got critical thinking. Children don't. They say, ah, okay, I'm stupid. I will now take that on board and then I will behave in such a manner as to prove you right. And that's what they do. All right. So imagine we've had years and years as children of people telling us what we are, telling us what we're good at and what we're bad at. The bottom line is, yes, we've all got skills, but we're all super intelligent. We've all got the same brain. We've all got the same capacity. It's whether we're able to use it or not. We've all got the same potential. But when somebody tells you that you are not, or you can't, and you're young, you believe them. And then you go through your life. You hear people all the time, People are always telling me what they can't do. Speak in, pu speak in public. I can't speak in public. No, I just can't do that. You see, when, when I see that, my mind goes blank. Yeah. When, if you're going to talk to me about grammar, don't, because I don't understand it. And I'll never understand it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's incredible when people say that. Um, that's because at some point, somebody has given them that dodgy program. Maybe they've given it themselves, but normally not. In my experience, normally these dodgy beliefs that, and a belief is we, we run our lives on our beliefs, eh? And you can change beliefs like that, eh? Change beliefs like that. Um, but you've got to know how to. People say, well, no, I believe that and I'd never change that. You can change beliefs in a split second. Mm. Yeah. For example, would you kill somebody? People go, no, I'm a pacifist. I'd never kill anybody. And then somebody holds a gun to one of your family member's heads. You would think, wouldn't think twice about killing them. They're going to kill them. You would kill them. Yeah. So beliefs can change given the right circumstances. Okay. So we want to change some beliefs that you have. What's, what are your limiting beliefs about learning Spanish? What are your lim limiting beliefs about your intelligence? What are your limiting beliefs about how well you can learn? What are your limiting beliefs about you as a person? Yeah. Um, these, these are what control us. We, we live by our beliefs. Yeah. We live by them and we run programs to prove our beliefs to be true. Okay. There's a thing and it's called cognitive dissonance. It is very important to understand what that means. If you believe that you cannot learn very well, 
Okay. What happens is your mind ensures, ensures that that belief is proved right because it wants you to be right. So when you say, I don't learn at a great speed, I, I'm a really slow learner. Your mind, everything you say that comes out your mouth, mouth, by the way, comes back in the loop and goes into your head and your head says, I'll sort that out for you then. So you, you're, not a, you're not a fast learner, no problem. I'll just slow that down for you. Okay, your mind does that for you. It's, your mind's really good at being good at making your beliefs true. And of course, beliefs are completely, they've got nothing to do with truth. What you believe has nothing to do with truth. It's just what you believe. Because if you go and check, everybody has different beliefs. So we can't all be true, can we? So cognitive dissonance is this. You say, I am a slow learner. Mm. All right. And then one day you pick up a book and you look at it and you learn it like that. And you, you say, whoa. What? I've got that. I've got that. Now, what do you do? What happens in your mind? Your mind says, eh, 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 eh. something wrong here. Um, you're a slow learner. And so what do we do in, in that circumstance? When we are faced with something that goes against our belief, we do one of two things. Right? One thing that we do is we say, we reprogram. Right? Um, we say, yeah, but you watch the next time, I won't be able to learn it. That's a one-off. It's a one-off. It'll never happen again. You watch. Yeah? And we do that. And we do it over and over again. Why? Because we can't have two beliefs, opposing beliefs in one mind. And because it makes us crazy. This is, this is what happens when you go crazy in your mind because you're trying to hold different things. It's, this is what's called cognitive dissonance. So, so one is either we, we reprogram, yeah? And we say, yeah, it was just a one-off. Yeah, it won't happen again. And the mind says, sorted, got that. I'll make sure that doesn't, sorry, slip through the net. Quick learning, slip through the net. And then... The second thing that we do, if we don't reprogram or as well as reprogram, no, if we don't, we completely ignore it. We, we are blind to it. We have a scotoma, it's called. So we don't even see it. Or we say, no, that, that probably didn't happen. I, I, th I thought I'd got it, but mm, I, I haven't. And so we deny. So we either reprogram or we deny anything that goes against what we believe about us. Bummer, isn't it? We're rubbish at it. But only because we don't know. When you know, then you can start to do something about it. When you understand that the mind is a simplistic thing, when you understand how it works. Have you heard of the expression, garbage in, garbage out? Okay? The mind is like that. If you put rubbish thoughts into your mind, you're going to get rubbish stuff out. That's it. It's simple. If you tell yourself that you were rubbish, and you know it sounds like, oh, I don't do that. If I had five pounds for every time I have seen somebody do some, say something negative about their own selves, I'd be a millionaire. A millionaire. The amount of people that say self-deprecating things about themselves, yeah? Oh, I, yeah, I'm no good at that. Nah. No, I'm rubbish at that. I'm, I'm an absolute... I'm, I'm, I'm useless. And they, they, they're saying these things about their own selves. Yeah. Even to the degree people hit themselves. Have you seen people hit themselves? Yeah. When they do something wrong, they go, what an idiot. All the time I see people hit hitting themselves, we say things to ourselves that we would never dare say to anybody else. We abuse ourselves. Why? Because we probably think we don't deserve any better, because we've seen other people do it, because we're trying to maintain the belief that we have about our own selves. And it's time to change.
it's time to believe in the real you. Because let me tell you about the real you. The real you is a capable, fantastic, intelligent person who has every everything that they need, that you need to learn beautifully and to learn quickly and to learn with fun and enjoy it. You have everything you need already. You don't need anything else. All that we need to do is get rid of these stupid, idiotic programs that other people who were stupid and idiotic give us. And they were stupid and idiotic because they didn't know any better. I'm not blaming them. They didn't know. And they were given the same programs by their parents and their parents and their parents. And we go on passing on these awful programs to our, to our children until we know about it. Yeah? Okay. So, first step. This is how you start to change the way that you think. And it's very simple. The first step is you say, when you make a mistake, when something's not quite going right, when you can't quite understand something, the very first thing that you do is stop. And you say this, hmm, okay. Well, that was a mistake. I did that incorrectly. That's, that's not a criticism. That's just an observation. I did that incorrectly. The next time... I'm going to do that better. Mm -hmm. That's it. Simple. Eh? Therapy's over. Yeah, I'm going now. No. That's what you say. The next time. The next time, I'm going to take my time with that. The next time, instead of saying this, I'm going to say that. The next time, I'm going to spend a little bit more time. The next time, I'm going to read it again. And again, maybe three times. What you're doing, what are you doing? You, you're programming. You're reprogramming your mind because your mind's listening all the time. It, it wants you to tell it what to do. It's waiting for your instructions. So when you say, well, look, the next time, you, you, you're chatting, imagine. This is a great system to use. You're chatting in Spanish. You make a, a big cock up, okay? As we all do. It's impossible not to, all right? We're humans, we're, we're imperfect. We've got, we've got issues that, we, that happen as we're talking. Our mind gets distracted, we say stuff and we get nervous, no, whatever. So you made a mistake, all right? What do you do? You're thinking about it and you think, oh, do you know, I think I used para and I, and I know it was poor, all right? So what you do is you say, well, the next time that I say that sentence, I'm gonna use por. That's it. But you say it with, with intention, all right? Nothing negative, right? Because we love ourselves, don't we? We're gonna do some of this in a moment. We love ourselves. So you don't say horrible things to your own self. Why would you? You are all you've got. You've all, you are all you've got. Everybody else has got themselves. You are the only thing that you have that you can count on. You know that, don't you? So, nothing negative, and you're, gonna, you're going to give yourself the new program. The next time I'm going to use port, now that I know, now that I think about it. Right, what happens? The next time comes along, and you say, para. All right? Man, why do you say para? Because my system doesn't work? No. Because we're dealing with programs that are, some of them are deeply rooted. Okay, you've been saying para for a long time. All right. So just one thought won't change it. Won't change it. Imagine the mind's like this. Imagine positive weight, negative weight. Right? Imagine it's like this. So when you say, well, the next time I'm going to use port, you shift a little bit but not all the way, because it's just one little thought, isn't it? And we have millions of thoughts all the time. So then the next time it happens and you say para, and you think, oh, no, wait, the next time I say por, all right? And maybe you'll say para again, but then you still keep at it. Well, look, the next time I say por, 
and now we're balanced, right? And maybe we'll say para sometimes and we'll say por, but you keep at it until you've changed your mind. That's what we're doing, we're changing our mind. That's why you've got to keep at it. You don't say it once and then go, oh, well, that didn't work. That was a load of rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. Keep at it. Because you're dealing with years and years and years of negativity quite often. Our self-talk can be very negative. Okay, it's very, it's very important that you listen to what you say to yourself because what you're saying to yourself is creating yourself. Okay? So... Be very careful with that and, and listen. We're not aware of our self-talk, but when, it, when you become aware of it, when you listen to what you're saying, sometimes you get quite a shock, yeah? Because as I say, you, you, we say things to ourselves that we wouldn't dare say to anybody else, yeah? Just think about what you say when you look in the mirror sometimes in the morning. Okay, that's the first bit. Right, now let's deal with this feeling that we have now we have very often we have very negative feelings around learning and it's all because of our bad experiences and spanish remember spanish is learning yeah we've got that feeling this negative feeling about learning about ourselves about our own ability mm -hmm. and we've also got another feeling another negative feeling and that is about not making mistakes we don't like to make mistakes Children don't care. Children make mistakes all the time, don't care. You correct them, they don't care. There's something that happens about when we become an adult that when we make a mistake, we want to die. We want to run away. We want to never ever have to see those people again because we made a mistake, all right? Now, where I believe that comes from is also from when we were young, okay? Because what happens in a classroom if you stand up and you say something and it's wrong? What happens? Everybody laughs at you, at you, not with you, at you. And now that can be, I, I, it happened, I can remember it happened to me. I had a, a moment, I, I did something. Yeah, I was, I was reading in class. The teacher made me read, all right, you know, the, the, out, out loud in front of the class. So, I was reading and I said M as I was trying to work out what the next word was. So let's say it was, you know, and the cat went to the, um, the teacher hit me and said, the cat didn't go to the M, the cat went to the zoo or whatever. Oh, all the children, heaps of laughter. Oh, ha ha. Funniest thing in the world for them. For me, worst experience I could possibly have. Disaster, awful, right? Now, what happens with those experiences? And I think most of us have them. Most of us have had them. What happens with those experiences is that it doesn't, it doesn't affect you as a child that much, okay? But it's like, a, imagine this little, a little wound. It's just a little wound that gets opened up. Sometimes very small. And then as we grow up, we have more experiences. Let's, I'll, I'll put it like this. Imagine that this is a line of consciousness. This is the unconscious here and then the conscious here, okay? And what happens is you get wounded in the unconscious mind. Your mind works like this, it says. It says, when, some, when you're about to do something, it says, have we had experience of this before? Yes, no, yes. Was it a good experience or was it a bad experience? Because your mind's trying to keep you safe all the time, by the way. That's the only reason why we feel frightened and all of that. It's because the mind wants to keep us safe, yeah? So your mind says, have I seen this before? Yes. Was it a good experience? No. Okay? And so it makes you feel bad about doing it. It makes you feel frightened. It makes you feel whatever. Because it doesn't want you to do it. Because it knows that it's dangerous. This is unsafe. Does that make sense? Now, as we go through our life... What happens is we keep getting wounded again. We get into another situation, you've got to talk at work and, and then you've got to uh, do something else or, or you, you, you're caught on the hop and you've got to do an impromptu, vroom, another wound. And then suddenly, and this happens a lot around the 30s, 
Why, I don't know, but it's just, obviously just the build-up. Something happens, one thing, and suddenly people have a phobia. And phobias appear. Twen late 20s, 30s. People go, I, suddenly I've got a phobia and I, I don't know where it's come from. Yeah? And they think it's this little event. It's this event. The, the event that started right at the beginning. So these little wounds that we have are the ones that make us frightened when we have to speak Spanish. Where we don't want to make mistakes because people laugh at you. And we know that because it happened. Yeah. And even if it didn't happen to us, we saw it happen. That's just as frightening. When you say, ho, 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 I'm pleased I'm not him because, oh, in fact, they're all laughing at him. I don't think I'll speak because I don't want to, I don't want to put myself in that dangerous position. Okay. Does that make sense? That's why we're frightened to make mistakes. And that's why we get fearful around learning. We feel negative about learning. Okay. So there we are. That's the, that's the preamble done. I want you, I, I needed you to understand that because it's lots of times we think it's a, for other reasons that we feel like this. We think it, it, it's us, which is not good enough. Yeah. But it's not, it's just negative emotions that your body's giving you to keep you safe. So you don't get back into that. So it's dangerous. All right. So all that we've got to do is re-educate our mind to let it understand that it's not dangerous to talk in public. It's not dangerous to make a mistake. In fact, it's extremely beneficial to make mistakes. In fact, you can't learn without making mistakes. When you learn to tie your shoelaces, did you get it right the first time? Not at all. How many times did you get it wrong before you got it right? Yeah, it's not dangerous. It's absolutely vital that you make mistakes. When a baby starts learning to walk, imagine a baby gets up on his feet, yeah, takes his first step, falls down on his bum, and it says, I'm not doing that again. That's terribly dangerous. Doesn't it gets up and it falls down, it gets up and falls down, it gets up and falls down thousands upon thousands of times, and that's how we learn. Because your mind learns not this, that. Ah, not this, that. That's how your mind learns, yeah. It has to have a comparison. Otherwise, it doesn't know if it's right or wrong. It needs to know the wrong to know the right. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, making mistakes is fine, right? So it's not us. It's not us at all. So now, what, this is what I'd like you to do. This is where I want you to follow the instructions step by step, okay? And it's just a nice, simple little, a little visualization or a, an imaginary thing that we're going to do, okay? It's not hypnosis or anything like that. Everything's hypnosis, but this is not official hypnosis, let's say that, yeah? Um, we're all in hypnosis now, just a different kind. So, I digress. I want you to do this and uh, please trust the very first answer that comes to mind every time that I ask you a question, okay? The reason is that our unconscious mind gives us the answer, the correct answer, that quickly. It's there. And what we do, because sometimes it's not the answer that we think we should have, yeah, we think it should be grander, it should be bigger, it should be more, mm -hmm. yeah, we dismiss it and we create what we think would be a good answer. No, I want you to just trust that what comes to mind, sometimes it's a, it's a word, it's a flash, it's a color, it's a whatever. Trust that, that's the answer. Your unconscious mind is, I've, I've been talking to your unconscious mind as well and it's ready to help you, okay? So, let's deal with an, any negative feeling that you have about learning, okay? just about learning in what in what areas as you're learning do you have this negative feeling it might be grammar it might be um uh the reading side it might be listening some people have tremendous anxiety when they're listening because they can't hear what the person's saying because they're talking to themselves all the time inside okay trying to work out what the person's saying so get in touch with that negative feeling and i want you to tell me you can't tell me, but I want you to point 
where that feeling is inside of your body. Just point with your finger now. Where's that feeling inside of your body? Point to it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do now is I want you to imagine. I want you to put your hands inside of your body and I want you to bring out that feeling onto your hands. Bring it out in front of you. Okay? So do that. I'll give you a moment. And get it all. These feelings have the hiding corners and the sneaky. Make sure you get it all out onto your hand. All of it. Okay? Now, if you haven't got it all out, pause the tape and then pause the video and then get out. Okay. Now, I want you to look at that feeling. You've got it in your hand. This is a negative feeling. All right. Nothing wrong with that. It's to keep you safe. But I want you just now, I want you to notice how heavy it is. What sort of weight does this negative feeling have? Okay. Just notice it. It might be heavy. It might be light. It might, might have any weight. It might be really heavy. Don't know. And then I want you to notice the tact, the, the feel of it. What kind of what kind of feeling does it have when you touch it? Is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it like a brain type of thing? Is it spiky? What touch does it have? And I want you to notice the temperature too. What's the temperature like? Is it, is it hot or cold? Is it icy? Is it boiling? Is it, is it tepid? Mm -hmm. Now this negative feeling that you've got in your hands, I'd like you to give it a name. I don't know what name it would be, what, whatever word that comes to mind now. Okay. And what colour is it? As you look at it now. Hmm. If it had a colour, what colour would it be? Okay. Now, I want you to pay attention to this feeling that you have in your hands. Because this feeling is an emotion. Now, emotions only work through movement. You never, ever have a static emotion. Emotions can't work. If they're still, there is no emotion. They're always moving. And I want you to pay attention. You're going to notice that this emotion is moving in, either spinning to the right or spinning to the left. Okay? And I want you to notice which way is it spinning? Is it to the right or is it to the left? Okay, just notice that. It might be spinning really slowly, but it's moving. Okay. Now, once you've identified which way it's spinning, I want you now to start spinning it the opposite direction. In the opposite direction. Okay, so start that now. If you have to do it manually and start it off, start it off. And now, every time I click my fingers, it's going to double in speed. Okay, and it's going to get faster and faster and faster. So start making it go faster. Double the speed now. That's it. Double the speed again. Double the speed again. Double the speed again. Double the speed again. Faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until it's a blur. Now, what you're going to notice is that it's going to change color because it's going in the opposite direction. It's a different kind of emotion now. It's completely changed color. Notice what color is it now as it's spinning and spinning and spinning faster and faster and faster and faster. Absolutely like a blur now. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do in a second, I want you to do this really quickly, is you're going to put it back where you got it from and you're going to bang it into your chest on the count of three. Three, two, one, go. Boom. Push it back in. And notice what happens as that different emotion goes in because it's going in an opposite direction. It's the opposite number. And I want you to notice what happens inside of your body now as you start having the opposite of that old emotion and you're going to allow that feeling now to start to permeate through the whole of your body, changing every memory, changing every molecule, every nerve, every fiber, every atom of your body. So that that feeling, that old feeling can never ever be the same again. And you'll find now as you go into the future, and looking back, you'll start to notice 
that that feeling has changed now. And it's going to be a feeling of positivity. It's going to be a feeling of, I can. It's going to be a feeling of, yes, I think I can do this. And I don't know how long it's going to take you to notice the difference in the way that you're feeling now. It might be in a second. It might take as long as an hour for you to start to notice the difference in how you're feeling. And you are feeling different things now because you can't not, can't you not? Because you've done something, you've changed an old pattern and you've created a new pattern, you've put a new program in. You said to your mind, not this, this. The next time I'm gonna feel positive about my learning. The next time I'm gonna feel positive when I'm listening to somebody. The next time I'm going to take my time. The next time when I'm listening to somebody, I'm gonna shut up and just listen to them. And I'm gonna trust that my mind will understand. The next time when somebody's giving me grammar, I'm just going to chill and breathe nice and slowly and just listen to what they're saying. The next time I'm gonna do it better. And you know it's true. And you can do that. You can. Because you are a capable, intelligent, wonderful person. You must be. Because you're here listening to this and following Lightspeed Spanish. So you're wonderful for me. Okay. So that's the first one. I don't know how long we've been doing this. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I think I'd like to do another little technique. I want to show you this technique and I would like you if, you, if you have an issue that you want to overcome, I would like you to do this as a daily exercise until you get to the point where you feel better. This process is called havening. It was designed by two doctors. It was discovered by two doctors in New Jersey it's promoted by Paul McKenna massively now, and um, I'm a, a havening practitioner, and I have had some tremendous, tremendous results personally, and also with other people with havening. It is the dog's doings, and it's great for fear and trauma. All right, oh, trauma creates everything else. My belief is that every issue that we have Every issue that we have, and I'm talking about mentally and physically, is derived from a trauma that we've had at some point. Okay? And havening, physical or, or me mental trauma, and havening takes away the trauma. It just takes it away. Okay? And it, it's marvellous. It's marvellous. Okay. So it's very simple. It's a very, very simple process. So we're going to do it together. I'm going to show you how it's done. I hope the microphone won't get in the way. It shouldn't, yeah. All you're going to do is this. You're going to cross your hands over your body, like Tutankhamun, okay? And you're going to rub down to your elbows in one direction, like that, yeah? Now, the pressure that you're going to put on is, imagine, um, you know, imagine you, your child's crying and you want to make them feel better and you're going to be rubbing them. It's a, it's a strong rub, okay? It's a, it's a reassuring rub, everything's all right. Okay, havening was designed, basically it's called havening because when trauma hits us, when we have trauma, if we don't have a safe haven to run to, to get healed, the trauma sticks, basically. So what I mean by that is, you fall over when you're a child, you scratch your knee, you look up, your mum's there, yeah? Have you, you've seen this with a child. Child falls down, cuts his knee, looks up, can't see his mum. She doesn't cry, he doesn't cry, uh, until he sees his mum, then he starts to cry, and he runs over, and his mum, what, what does his mum do? Never mind, son, there, there, everything's all right, you're with your mum now. Now that's your haven, okay? But what happens is sometimes, you're in a classroom and the teacher says, that was a stupid thing to do. And there's nowhere to run. We're trapped. 
So you get this mixture of being trapped, nowhere to run, no safe place to hide, drama. All right, and this is just what happens to all of us, all of us. And it can be something really simple. It doesn't have to be a major trauma, you know. It can be the most, some of the, some of the things that we've come up with in, when I've done hypnosis, regressive hypnosis with people, some of the traumas are, are nothing. They're nothing, but they have such an impact on people that affects the health or the, or, or the, 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 the mental health as well. I, I had one, one boy who's... When he, was a, when he was a boy, his dad went out of the house to talk to a man and left him in the living room. That was it. Trauma. And it affected, he had depression. For five years or something like this, depression. And we took it away and we did some other stuff and his depression disappeared. Incredible. Eh? So don't worry that you, if you don't have a, like a, a trauma... Um, you know, big trauma. Could just be a little thing. But we're going to do this, okay? I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to trust your first answer. Trust the first answer, even if it doesn't really make much sense, okay? If you were to know, what is your earliest memory of having a trauma around learning? First one that comes to mind, okay? So, Trust what came to mind. If you don't have a first memory, then all I want you to do is focus on the feeling. Yeah? And if you did have a memory, I want you to go back to that time and focus on the feeling that you had and notice how familiar that feeling is and how many times you felt it during your life. Because I bet my bottom dollar that that's not the, that wasn't the only time that you felt that feeling. That you felt it a lot. So focus on the negative feelings that you have around learning. Okay? And then focus on them. And we're going to focus on the, the, fe the negative feelings for about five seconds. Okay? Focus on them now. Really let them build up. Really understand where it is in your body, that feeling. And, and how it's moving. And all that negativity that you've got. And all that horrible memory. Alright? And then just clear your mind. Let it go. And with me... We're going to start to haven. All right, so just do this. Haven. So you're just rubbing like this. Now, I'd like you to do this with your eyes closed, if you don't mind. And I'll keep mine open because I want to talk to you. Now, as you're doing this with your hands and rubbing nice and firmly from the top of your shoulders down to your elbows, I'd like you to think about five things that you were good at. Five things, and as I come to mind, just count them off from one to five. Five things that you were very good at. Mm -hmm. Give you a little time. And don't worry if you don't get to five. Okay. So, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to think about five, five things in Spanish that you really enjoy doing, that you really enjoy doing. Five things that you have great fun at. Off you go. All the time, you're keeping your hands moving, okay? You never stop havening at any time. All right, just keep it going all the time. Well done. Okay. Now, I'd like you to think now, as you think about it, if you went forward five years in your life, and look back over the five years and you'd kept up the rate of learning that, that you were doing now. Yeah, or maybe even increased your rate of learning. And you look back five years. What would be the most important things that you would have done in your learning in Spanish? What would it be the five, or the five most, the biggest accomplishments that you would have done in five years in your Spanish and think about them and count them out as they come to mind. Five big accomplishments. Oh, 
all the while havening at the same time. Okay. Don't worry if you haven't got five. We'll just stop there. And then the last one. I just want you to think about this and just allow to come to your mind whatever it is that comes to your mind. What would it be like? What would you be like as a person? What would it be like and how would it feel if your learning were three times faster than what it is now? How would things be if you learned three times faster than you do now? Just think about that. Think about the possibilities of what it would mean and what it would be like. All the while havening. What would life be like? three times faster than what you do now. That would just be so fantastic, wouldn't it? Imagine the things you could learn. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do now is just continue to haven with your eyes closed and I want you just to listen to my voice, but you don't have to pay attention to me. I'm just going to talk to you and I'm going to talk to your other mind as well. Okay. So what we've done here today is really just one small step in a long journey of improvement because life is improving. Life is all about getting better and better and better. And the question is, how fast can you get better? Because you're going to get better. Of that, there's no doubt. And the question really is just how fast can you do it? And can you do it faster than you're doing it now? And if so, how would you do that? And I wonder how your mind could set up a plan to help you to learn faster than you are. I wonder how long it would take your mind now to set up a plan to help you feel more confident, to make you feel more at ease when you're listening and talking Spanish, to make you feel more at ease when you're looking at grammar. I wonder how long it would take your mind as it thinks about it now to put all of that into place for you because I know that your mind wants to help you, does it not? And it would help you in a big way, of course. And it will help you in a big way because that's what your mind does. And we've shown your mind today that we want this, not that. We want positivity. You want to be so much better than you are now. And that's great because it's all there and it's all achievable and you will be better. In fact, just from the beginning of this video to the end, automatically you've improved. Why? Not because I've done anything, but because you've changed how you think. You've changed some programs that were holding you back. There's an expression When I was a child, I used to think as a child, but now that I'm a man or a woman. And life is all about just realizations. We realize something and then we make the change. You realize something and then you make the change now. And that's all you have to do. And so every day or every time that there's any sign of any negativity, then all you need to do is just stand to one side, close your eyes and start to have in your arms. And you'll notice very, very, very quickly that all that negativity will just go away. And I wonder how many positive effects you're going to notice from this. Already, changes are happening. And I wonder how many more changes. I wonder how else this will affect you because these kind of therapies have such a massive knock-on effect and can affect all areas of our lives. And it will. So it's just a matter of waiting whilst your mind helps you to become so much better and faster and more at ease and more positive. 
and you can be. Okay, so you can stop now, take a nice deep breath. And that's it. So I don't know how long we've been, but uh, well, therapy is not something you need to rush. Okay, so if you, if you couldn't make it all the way through the, this video and you had to come back to it, no problem at all. Um, but thank you for, for being here with me and thank you for doing this. And, and I promise you that you will have benefits from this. It's impossible not to. Okay, so there you are. That was your bonus chalk and talk. It wasn't really a chalk and talk, was it? We'll have to think of a different name for it uh, than chalk and talk. Um, okay, so hasta luego chicos and happy learning.